when I launched my very first book, the dot com secrets book, um, I didn't know any podcasters. So I went through the whole podcast directory and there's, you know, hundreds of, of really good <laughs> podcasts. So I sent every single one of them a copy of the book. And they're like, hey, here's my book. Can I be on your podcast? And within like a week, I got a call back from, I didn't know him at the time. I knew who he was, but I didn't, I didn't know him personally. It was, it was John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur Fire. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneur Fire. And JLD's like, dude, your book's awesome. I want to interview you on the podcast. And blah, blah. I'm like, okay. So he interviewed me on the podcast. We told some stories like this. I we told people to go buy the copy of the book. And uh, from that one that one interview, we sold over 500 copies of, of the nice. Dot Com Secrets book. So I got one yes, and I got 500 customers from it, right? And then I got a whole I got probably a dozen other podcasters who had let me on the shows as well. And like, and like that strategy is really powerful because one yes opens up a thousand yeses. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Yo, what's up? How are you? I'm doing well. We're still in lockdown. We are in lockdown, so we're virtual again. It seems to be working out. We still got our flow. Yeah. Still a little, little lag, you know, in the interwebs since everyone's using the internet right now. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep. Today we actually have a uh, kind of a legend in our marketing space. You know, he's he's legendary. He's known for um, a very um, popular guns. course that he put out. Yeah, the potato gun course. How to, how to, how to make a potato gun dot com. <laughs> that's obviously what he's most known for in the world is the potato gun stuff. You, you know it, and uh, you know Click Funnels as well. So yeah, he's also one of the co-founders of Click Funnels. He wrote dot com secrets, expert secrets, and traffic secrets is the newest book. And uh, today on this episode, we're going to really hone in on the traffic secrets stuff with Russell Brunson. With Russell Brunson. <laughs> Let's not forget <laughs> who named <laughs> yeah. So we got Russell on the show. It's a shorter show, but we got a lot yeah, with the time that we had. And uh, yeah, we we had the pleasure of getting the books actually before they're even released right now, or at least this new book, Traffic Secrets. And um, obviously, we've chatted with a lot of traffic folks on the podcast. But what we both love about the traffic book, Traffic Secrets, is it's not like here, click this button and do this thing, do that thing that are just outdated in like a week. But it's like, here are the paradigm shifts that yeah. you need to go through to really understand traffic, but not just like the ad networks or all that stuff, but like the business as a whole. And I think there was, there was a lot of big ahas for both of us that we experienced. Yeah, so uh, this is a very densely packed episode. We had 30 minutes with Russell today. And so we tried to get as much out of this episode as we could. And, um, you know, we, I, I, Joe and I felt like the biggest impact we can get was really focusing on those paradigm shifts that, you know, you, Joe was just mentioning. Um, I also, out of curiosity, wanted to know the story behind how he got on the profit and got to know Marcus Limonis. Mm-hmm. And um, he uh, graciously gave us that story as well. But what you're really going to come away from this episode, understand is why you should be using these different traffic sources and like what their uses are versus the actual tactics. You can get the tactics in his book. You know, his Traffic Secrets book, we actually have a URL for you. If you go to hustleandflowchart.com slash traffic, you can go get his Traffic Secrets book and he breaks down the tactics. Like he literally at the end of each chapter says, if you're going to use Google ads or if you're going to use Google, here's what I would do on a daily basis. Here's what I do on a weekly basis. Here's what I do on a monthly basis. And he breaks it down to that granular level. And that's all inside the book. So what we wanted to talk about here is more of the the why behind the various traffic mm-hmm. strategies, the sort of higher level hows, the dream 100 concept, the philosophies, the why you should understand the history of these various traffic sources. We really dive into a lot of that kind of stuff in this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so even if you're a, you know, if you're a novice starting with no traffic or even no business right now, amazing first start is to get the traffic secrets book. But also mm-hmm. even if you're a veteran, guarantee like they're just minute things you probably haven't thought about and i really do love his dream 100 concept and it's um it's kind of sprinkled throughout the entire book in different formats and we cover that inside this uh in in this podcast at a high level and you can see like exactly how it then translates into actually running traffic too but also like it's kind of like how we use the dream 100 to get guests on the show i mean we even i've been said to to russell i'm like you were on there and (laughs) but like he does the same thing 
And like yeah. you said, you know, uh, Marcus Lemonis was on his Dream 100. And uh, and then that turned into like what you just said, being on The Profit and all these other things, building funnels for him. So um, really cool stuff, man. So yeah, hustleandflowchart.com slash traffic. You can get the book. And it's, um, he basically, you know, it's, I think it's like 10 bucks for shipping. It's something like that if you're in the US, like Russell said in this episode, uh, maybe a little bit more international. But either way, it's a no brainer if you hustleandflowchart.com slash traffic. Yes. And uh, yeah. speaking of traffic, uh-huh. uh, Hrefs is a really cool tool for uh, SEO. They are absolutely amazing and perfect timing for this episode, too. So um, you've been actually using Hrefs to uncover. We might have already talked about it, but I feel like you're digging in deeper with Hrefs. I feel like we've used Hrefs for what, like three years or so, three plus years, yeah. a yeah, long time. Remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like just the other day, you're like, Hey, look what's happening over here. I'm seeing some trends like that are very interesting for these mm-hmm. keywords for this product that we sell as an affiliate. Hey, yeah. I think we should run some more ads over here because search traffic's going way up and we didn't know that. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, yeah. I'm literally going into Ahrefs and doing a search for specific terms and looking at the trends of how SEO tra- or search traffic is affecting these keywords, right? So I could go in there and see like, ooh, this keyword, more and more people are searching for it. Maybe we should try to SEO some content around it. Maybe we should buy some ad traffic to that keyword and really sort of leaning in on some of the trends we're seeing, which was is kind of something new that I've been doing. That and, um, and finding PPC terms. I, mm-hmm. I've actually recently learned that I could go and plug in some of our competitors URLs in there and it'll tell me what PPC terms they're bidding on. And I can decide whether or not I want to bid on some of those same terms, but just so much cool stuff that you can do mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. So Ahrefs, it's A-H-R-E-F-S.com. And uh, yeah, they're amazing sponsors and you can get a trial for seven bucks, seven day trial and basically mm-hmm. experience all of these features. And there are a lot. So doubt you can get through them all in seven days, but you can sure as heck like see what's possible and then start a handful of these things. Like do what Matt just said. Basically yeah. look at yeah. your competitors and like, boom, look at all these opportunities right there. And you can see what's actually working for them where the traffic's at. So Ahrefs, you'll love it. Yeah, and and I did mention this was a fa- uh, fairly densely packed episode where we kind of squeezed a lot of content out of Russell um, in a in a short amount of time than we shorter amount of time than we normally have, which means you're probably going to want the notes on this. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get the notes by going to hustleandflowchart.com/comp or you can text the word comp to 38470 and we'll hook you up with the notes there too. If you do decide to become an Evergreen Profits member, you'll be able to access the whole video version that we did because this was actually on video with Russell. We'll Mm -hmm. make sure that's in the members area for anybody to view so you can actually see ours and Russell's beautiful face on camera while we have a conversation together. He showed off his his some diagrams in the book for demonstration purposes. And uh, I think he was in his house because he's quarantined too or locked down. So it's like, yep. we're all getting different experiences with folks right now, you know? <laughs> yep. yep. So, so uh, flowchart.com slash comp to get the notes or text the word comp to 38470. You can get the notes for free, but you got to be quick. They're available for two weeks. After that, they get locked into the members area and you got to be a member to get access. Let's go Let's to do it with Mr. Potato Gun. I mean, Russell Bronson. So Russell, thanks, man. We'll do a, a kind of re-intro. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on the, on the show here. And um, yeah, we're talking about traffic secrets and everything traffic related and uh, what it's like the end of your trilogy with the whole box set that you got behind you, people watching. <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's fascinating, man. I felt like it was a good perspective shift, you know, and when it comes to traffic of how to organize traffic and how to do it consistently. I felt like that was kind of a big takeaway for me. Matt's playing with the box over there. I'm just trying to get my copy out so I have it in front of me. He gets stuck yeah. in the box. Like, oh. <laughs> I know. I haven't been working out in quarantine, so I got to do this. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think I think what we wanted to talk to you about today on on this episode is not necessarily getting into the actual traffic tactics. I mean, anybody who grabs this book, which you're you know you're going to be basically giving it away. Anybody who grabs it can actually get the tactics by reading the book. I think what we wanted to talk about is more the sort of philosophy behind the traffic and talk a little bit about the the sort of mindset shifts that people need to have because I think that was one of the things that. Joe and I got when we went through this book is there's a lot of different 
perspective changes around traffic that you get from going through this book. The, the tactics are in there as well. I love how at the end of each chapter, you've got like a, a little breakdown of like daily do this, weekly do this, monthly do this. I mean, that's amazing. Um, but I think what was the most valuable for me was just some of the perspective shifts around like the dream 100 and knowing the sort of goal behind the traffic sources and things like that. So I think that's where we really want to sort of dive in. Cool. I think it's interesting because most people, um, when they think about traffic, especially because the last like, I don't know, seven or eight years, like traffic's been kind of easy. Like you go to Facebook, you set up an ads account and boom, you got traffic. And, um, but for anyone who's been doing this for a long time, you remember back, back when we got started, like I got started before Facebook and before MySpace and before Friendster, before there were so <laughs> and, uh, and it was different. Like we, like the, I remember seeing like, how do I get traffic? And everyone's like, I don't know. And so we just try stuff all the time. I remember um, back then I, I wanted to, to learn this, but it wasn't like internet marketing people you could hire or seminar. Like there wasn't that kind of stuff happening back then. Mm -hmm. um, so I joined this group with all these old school direct response guys like Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer. And, and I remember joining, I go to this thing and I was the only internet nerd in, <laughs> in the room. And they used to tease me so bad. They like, they come in with a, with a letter and envelope like, Russell, this is a letter. We send these in the mail. People can actually <laughs> open them. Have you ever seen one before? I'm like, oh, you know. Um, but I remember one at one of those first meetings I was at, um, I can't remember who it was, one of the guys there said, um, he said, the reason why a lot of internet marketers struggle and they have the, these big ups and downs is they think the internet is a business. And he's like, the internet's not a business. You guys understand that, right? They, and I'm like, no, I thought it was a business. He's like, no, no, like, the internet is a media channel. It's like, if you look at direct mail and radio and TV and newspapers, those are all media channels. And the internet is just a media channel as well. And when you understand it that way, it's like, the principles that work in direct mail and radio are the same principles that work over here. And so you look at it a little bit differently and like, oh, this is a media channel. So the 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 um, the stuff that, that we knew are true, like all of the all the strategies that work in these other channels also work here. As opposed mm -hmm. to most people are like, oh, I, I do Facebook ads. So they, they figure out like this one loophole, this one tactic and they do that. But if if their ads account gets shut down or prices change or whatever, like most people, like that's the end of their business. They, they lose it. And so my yeah. goal with this book was to get like the whole conversation for all of us entrepreneurs just thinking differently about, about how to get traffic. Cause there's so like, there are so many ways to get traffic that aren't Facebook. And there's so many other ways to do it. Some, most that are better, but nobody even knows about them. Cause they're all just focused on the one simple one that's easy to do right now. And yeah. So that's one of my major, major goals with this. Yeah. I think you achieved it, man, because you started off with talking about, you know, how to make a potato gun.com and like how getting all started. I remember those days too. I remember looking at the, the website. It was great, man. Never made one though. Uh, probably should. But uh, you had a, like a good story in there how, you know, it was just really cheap traffic at the time. And then the Google slap days came and it basically forced you to innovate and create a funnel on the back end so you can then you know earn off of the what the three dollar clicks or so it was on the front end and i just thought just that story and then the evolution of you know obviously more platforms increasing rates or restrictions or whatever it might be competition my whole takeaway from that was like it's forcing entrepreneurs to really get innovative and creative with funnels and that back end system and without that thing i mean you're kind of Good luck. You might get lucky here and there, but I kind of wanted to talk about that and that whole perspective change that you had back then and how it carries over now with funnels and kind of that whole un, unseen piece of the traffic funnel. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I, don't, I think a lot of times people are like, oh, traffic is over here and funnels are over here and they're, they're different. And like when you read the book, you'll see like how, how close they, they all fit together, how important they are because um, traffic is not hard to get, right? I can go outside and I, I can go to any platform and dump money in and people will show up at my website. But if like your funnel's not good or doesn't convert or doesn't make enough money, like it doesn't, so like the two things work hand in hand. And one of the, one of the core principles I learned man, way back in the day was from Dan Kennedy he said, whoever can spend the most money to acquire customer wins. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that at first. I was like, he said that it kind of it didn't mean much to me. And that's when I had my little potato gun DVD, right? And I was selling mm -hmm. my potato guns. And, uh, you, you know, I tell the story in the book, but like, um, I, yeah, I, at first I was, it was super, like, anybody remembers Google back 15, 16 years ago. It was so simple. Like, mm -hmm. like clicks were like five cents a click. It was yep. so simple. Like you just put up an ad, put up a thing and you just, it just worked. You're like, I remember thinking I was the smartest person on the earth. Like I'm a genius. You know, <laughs> I thought it was so cool. And I was for like two or three months until like I was at the very end of this, this amazing gravy train where all of a sudden this thing came that we call the Google slap. And instantly I went from five cent clicks, to like $3 clicks. And now like I, I would, you know, before I would spend, I don't know, $10 to sell a $30 DVD. Now I'm spending like $50, $60 to send 
to sell a thirty dollars DVD, hmm. and really quickly that <laughs> the math the math does not work on that. <laughs> and um and so the rules all got changed. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And that's um I had a couple of experiences about that time. One, I heard this guy named Mike Littman said he said amateurs focus on the front end. And again, hmm. I'm like, I don't understand what he's talking about. Like, but all I had was my potato gun DVD, and then I had this one this one friend who came up to me and. Um, he said, well, when someone buys your DVD, what else do you sell them? I was like, that's all I have. Like the only product he's like, dude, he's like, you're missing the whole, he's like, when you go to McDonald's and they sell you a big Mac, what's the first question that I always ask you? I think I don't think they do it anymore, but they did back in the day. Right. And they're like, well, do you want to sell that? They would upsell <laughs> yeah. you. And he was like, yeah, you realize McDonald's makes $0 on their big Mac, right? That's they, they lose money. They make money when you buy the fries and the that's all the profit comes from fries and a Coke. And I was like, huh? I was like, well, how's that work for my potato gun DVD? And he was like, well, it, he's like, what, what's the next thing somebody needs? They buy the DVD, what's the next logical thing? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, um, I don't even know. And it was like, oh, the next logical thing. Well, then, now they have to go to the store and they got to buy pipes and a barbecue igniter and like all these things. He's like, well, what if you upsold them a potato gun kit? And I was like, oh my gosh, I could do that. So I found a guy, excuse me, uh, I'm in Boise, Idaho. So we're like the potato gun or potato capital of the world. And there's a guy <laughs> in Northern Idaho who lo and behold makes potato guns for a living and drop ships them. So I set up a deal with him. And uh, we said, someone buy my DVD, they'd upsell these potato gun kits and he would drop ship them to him. And sure enough, one out of three people who bought the DVD started buying these kits. And so because of that, I was making way more money for every customer. And so Google's ad cost didn't ever come down, but I was making more per customer. Now I was spending the same $50 a day, but now I was making $150 because yeah. the funnels was, was better. Mm-hmm. And also like, I got what, what Dan Kennedy said, whoever spends the most money to acquire customer wins. I was like, I can spend $50 to get a customer and nobody else can and that's what I, that was like a light bulb for me. I was like, oh, the funnel, like that's, that's the big secret. And we started geeking out. Right? And I started going to all these other businesses like, okay, like, let me take your business and let's take it from a static product to a funnel. And there's different funnels, different ways. We started doing that. And it became fascinating because if I got the funnel right, I could spend five times more money to get a customer than anybody else. And we would just demolish everyone else in the market. We just suck up all the customers. Yep. And so you get those two pieces together, like the traffic and the funnels, that's when it gives you the ability to, to really blow things up quickly. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Now, I had a question because this came up in, in multiple chapters in the book. Every time you talked about like a new sort of traffic source, every time you talked about, you know, Google or Facebook or one of those sources, you talk about understanding the, the history of the traffic source. Why, why do you think it's important to understand the history of the various traffic sources? Yes. Um, so if you had asked Russell this like seven years ago, my answer would have been completely different. Because back seven years ago, my goal was like, what's the loophole? Like, how are we going to like, <laughs> how are we going to like, get like what's the backdoor access thing to get all the traffic you know like if i can figure out so like we used to study google and stuff because it's like what are the algorithms how do we and how do we beat the system and for years we would do that and it was it was like th- there were pros and cons because like we would figured out we spend like six months doing all the stuff and we get ranked back on page number one and like a bunch of money's coming in like ah and then like it was shifting and we lose it mm. but it was always like this thing where we were trying to find the loophole and exploit it um the problem is like when you're doing that you're always kind of it's just like it's not a long-term right business. So when we launched ClickFunnels, um, I remember talking to my team. I was like, let's do this differently. Like, let's don't try to like figure out the loophole. Instead, let's let's really get aligned with what the networks want. Because if we can align with them and give them what they want, then they'll, they'll reward us, mm-hmm. which is a different mindset than I ever had. Because I think most entrepreneurs were like, how do we hack the system? And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to try to like, how do, I, how do I bow down to the powers that be and like and do it the way they want? And so for, for me, I like going to a thing and like understanding the history of like, what have they done? Why have they done it? And why they've done it because if i see where they're where they're going what they're trying to do and i can see where they're trying to go to then say like, okay this is what they're rewarding few people for right now it's not mm-hmm. not the loophole but this is what they want to create so it's like now i don't understand what they want me to create let me go and create a bunch of those things i think the, one of the first times i ever I ever like had the success was when google first launched uh google hangouts mm-hmm. and uh um, and they wanted people publishing on google hangouts or whatever so i was like okay so i started publishing daily on google hangouts and man, any keyword I would do a Google Hangout about the next day, or within like hours, I was on page one for that. And I was like, so I was doing Google Hangouts like four times a day and every keyword phrase I could think of. And like, and they were rewarding me and it grew. And, um, and it, was, it was amazing. And, um, and that was the thing, right? Facebook was the same thing. When Facebook Live came out, they were rewarding people like crazy because they wanted to get everyone to move off of Periscope and come mm-hmm. over to them. Right. And start publishing and they rewarded us. So it's like, so you're like, where, like, where are they going? What do they, what do they want you to do? And then do that. And they'll just reward you um, as you do it along the way. And so um, that's kind of the mindset shift. And so each of these chapters, like the networks I do show, I kind of try to show that the mm-hmm. history and then how understanding this history gives us a glimpse of where they, we should be going. But it also helps you understand that like, again, my, my biggest fear of writing this book was what happens if next week the government shuts down Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook <laughs> is 
no longer there or whatever. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I don't want the book to be to be irrelevant. So it's like when you understand the principle, it's like, okay, what's the next platform that's coming out? If it's TikTok or Twitch or hmm. some new system that all of us are going to make next weekend that comes out, you know, like how do you how do you understand these things so you can apply it to whatever whatever the platform is at the time? Yeah. And that was actually my bigger, uh, that was the very first thing I thought about when I saw traffic secrets and, you know, got it in the mail. I was like, uh oh, is it going to have a bunch of screenshots of like Facebook or Google platforms? I'm like, oh, this is going to be over in like a month. <laughs> yeah. You got some quick, Russell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. But it doesn't. And that's the beautiful thing. So, um, but yeah, I love it because, I mean, like in Facebook right now, groups are really big and <clears throat> engagement. They ran Super Bowl commercials promoting groups. Right. That's great. Right. Yeah. That shows how much Google wants you to be doing groups right now. So it's like, okay, if they're going to buy Super Bowl ads to get people in groups, that's what they want us to do. So let's go build groups right now. And you'd be crazy not to. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing almost, it's almost on par with the email list right now, which is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, yeah. it doesn't take a lot of work. Um, yeah. So one of the things you bring up too, and I thought this is really cool because we, we modified this from, I think, a mutual buddy of ours, Roland Frazier and Chet Holmes, is uh, the Dream 100 strategy. We use it to get dream guests on our podcast. You were on there. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and a whole bunch of other folks. But I like how you're using it to get your dream customers. And then, of course, you know, extend it into all these other methods. And one of the questions, common question is like, how do I start? You know, I have a business. I don't really have connections. I don't know what to do. Uh, where do I start with my traffic? And I really love what you're saying is like, get to know and really love and understand and just like obsess over your dream customers. Um, so can you get and give us just like an overview? I know it's a deep strategy, but of the dream 100 strategy from your uh, side of things. Yeah. Um, I did initially learn from Chet Holmes. Chet was a friend of mine before he passed away and, um, yeah. and he would use the dream 100 strategy. Like what he would do for those who don't know, he would go and say, okay, here's the, like here's the hundred clients that I want to land is like big, huge consulting clients. So he had a hundred people and he'd go aggressively market to these hundred people and he had whole campaigns, what he would do. And I remember he told me that and I was like, well, I sell books and I sell software. Like I, I can't spend $500 on a campaign to get someone to buy a book. Like I'll be broke really quick. And I couldn't quite connect the dots for a little while. And then one day I realized, I was like, wait a minute. And I talked about this, like chapter one of the books, like who is your dream customer? Chapter two is like, where are these people congregating? Right. Mm -hmm. and so it's like, like, for example, let's say you're in health and fitness. So your dream customer is obsessed with health and fitness. So like, what are the health and fitness blogs that they read? Maybe there's five blogs or 20 blogs. What are the podcasts they listen to? There's a whole bunch of podcasts. What are the Facebook groups they're part of? What are the, you start looking for all these different congregations. So that was step two. And then step three was like, okay, now, now I found like there's 300,000 people on this blog learning about health and fitness. Who is the person that owns that blog? Who's the, who's the person, if I can get them to like me and build a relationship, that they could like basically give me access to the entire, you know, to 100 customers or 1,000 yep. customers. Who's the person who, run, who owns the podcast? And so um, one of the things we, we show, I think it's a page 41. Yeah, page 41 in the Travis Secrets book. For those who can see this, I know some of you guys are listening, but if you can see it, I have this little chart here. It says it has all different networks of so Facebook, uh, Instagram, podcast. So what I do is I go say, okay, who on Facebook already has my dream customer? So who's already congregating together? They've got a group or they've got a fan page or they've got something where my customers I want are already hanging out there. So I write down the names of all those people here. Then I go to Instagram. Who are all the influencers that my dream customers are already following? And I list out all as many of those as I can. Then who are all the people, all the podcasters that have, have my dream customers listening to the podcast and YouTube. And I go through all these different things. And eventually I get a list of like 100 people or so, or maybe 150 or two. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be 100 exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. but whatever it is, you have your list of, of your dream 100. And then the question is like, okay, how do I market directly to these people? Because if I can get one of those people to say yes, it, it, it's not like I made one customer. It's like if that person says yes, it could open up 500 or 1,000 customers. Mm -hmm. A good example is when, um, when I launched my very first book, the Dot Com Seekers book, um, I didn't know any podcasters. So I went through the whole podcast directory and there's you know hundreds of, of really good <laughs> podcasts. So I sent every single one of them a copy of the book. And I'm like, hey, here's my book. Can I be on your podcast? And within like a week, I got a call back from, I didn't know him at the time. I knew who he was, but I didn't, I didn't know him personally. It was, it was John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur, mm -hmm. Park, Entrepreneur Fire. And JLD's like, dude, your book's awesome. I want to interview you on the podcast. And blah, blah. I'm like, okay. So he interviewed me on the podcast. We told some stories like this. I we told people to go buy them a copy of the book. And uh, from that one that one interview, we sold over 500 copies of of the nice. Dot Com Secrets book. So I got one yes, and I got 500 customers from it, right? And then yep. I got a whole I got probably a dozen other podcasters who had let me on the shows as well. And like and like that strategy is really powerful because one yes opens up a thousand yeses. That's and right. so it's it's kind of how we begin and. As you get deeper in the book, like that's that's that strategy is core to everything, right? Because the same mm. thing, like, like where am I where do I buy ads from? Well, what if I buy ads from the following of my dream one hundred, right? 
Like mm-hmm. JLD, I'll get him promoted on the show, but maybe I can buy ads in his podcast. Maybe I can follow his people on Facebook and Instagram and show them at, you know, and so it's like, yep. like all, all of our traffic strategies are all based off of this one core foundational concept of the dream 100. That's what I really liked about that too. And even in the book, there's what, three phases. I think they're in like 13 or 14 day segments of kind of like always how to keep that engine running with the Dream 100. So it's like, all right, once that person's off the list, even you know, obviously nurture, do what you will, but throw another person on there, study them, and then kind of go through the motions that way. Everything is just very systematic and it just kind of makes it just clear as day. You're just like, oh, okay, this is what I should do. It's not this whole mess of like, I don't know what to look at in the interwebs, <laughs> but yeah. So I thought that was rad. Um, hey, Matt, do you have something over there? Yeah, I, well, it's sort of a change of topic, but it's more of a, yeah. a curiosity question. So I was, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the show The Prophet with Marcus Limonis, and there was an episode where ClickFunnels was featured for the the watch company, <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of curious how that whole thing came about. Just you know, just out of interest. Well, um, so number one, Marcus Limonis. Uh, so it's my favorite. That's like my favorite show. I love it. So mm-hmm. he, he was like definitely on my dream 100. But I thought he was like he's too. Like he's a like. CEO camping world runs a billion businesses and he's on TV. You know, I was like, there's no way. So, but he was on my list. So I'm like, well, how do we get to him? And I tried like messaging him and like nothing. I tried a bunch of stuff. So finally I'm like, we have our event for I can lie. Maybe I hire him to be a speaker. And so, um, finally got a hold of his, someone on his team and they, uh, so we hired him to come speak at Funnel I can lie. So we did came and they gave us his time to get to know him, build a relationship with him. And, uh, he liked our, I mean, our audience loved him. He loved them. And I remember right before we, uh, he went and spoke, we sat down and, He's like, so what do you guys do? And we're like, oh, we're like a funnel builder or you know, website builder. And he's like, well, why is everyone out there so excited? Because I've been to website conferences and people don't normally go crazy. I'm like, oh, well. So we kind of explained him what a funnel was and he got all excited. So after he spoke when he left, uh, he, so funny. Most of the people that speak at our events, like they come in their private planes and jet, all these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Marcus Lamotis like jumps into the Uber and like take it. He was so cool, like so laid back. Um, but anyway, uh, he's texting me from the Uber. He's like, um, he was like, I want you to build funnels for some of my, some of my companies. And so he ended up, we built funnels for like, if you watch the show, like Sweet Pete's and mm-hmm. um, Paw, Paw Pack and Inca Shoes and like five, five or six companies of his we built funnels for. Yeah. And then one day he messaged me and it was so funny because he's like, he's like, uh, you're being recorded right now. Is that okay? And I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> hey, so I'm here right now with two guys and they have this company called Flex Watches and they know exactly who you are and they need a funnel. And like, would you be willing to come out here and build a funnel? I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> but it all came back. Like, it's, and you know, then we were on the show and a whole bunch of amazing stuff came from that, but it, it all, you know, you're wiring back. It all came back from like, he was on my dream 100 and, and we targeted him and figured out how to build a relationship. Like all the stuff we talk about in here, we did, excuse me, at the same time, we're also buying ads to his audience, you know, mm-hmm. like they're like, we're doing the whole process. He was just one of the people on the dream 100 who I looked up to and admired. And, and luckily we had a chance to, to work with. That's so that's cool. sweet, man. That's, I mean, that's, that's really cool. And that's, uh, that was actually something, uh, Roland, actually Roland Frazier, you know, and that's just how we, we use the dream wonder as well. Sometimes is like, Hey, you can, he let us know. It's like, you can pay for them to be a speaker, even on your podcast. But from there, think about the relationship that can be built after you just open the door once and then do your homework using the dream 100 process. Make sure you're not just, you know, flying blind when you get the conversation going. But, um, like that, that's just a perfect case study right there of anything can happen <laughs> once you open that door. Uh, there was something in your book that actually I liked. I think it was like at the very end, uh, and it wasn't like traffic specifically, but I think it was a good like reframe. If you're ever focusing on anything and traffic specifically, it was how can I give myself a raise every day? And just keeping that question in mind, I'm curious, like from your perspective, like how you would implement that, um, of course in traffic, but just in life business, uh, how do you apply that? Yeah. It's funny. Cause like most people, if they want to raise, it's like, Hey, I'll work for two years and I'll ask my boss for a raise. Or if you're, you know, a business professional or whatever, it's like, I gotta go back to, I'll get my master's degree and then I'll get a raise. But entrepreneurs, like we had, we had the ability to write our own paychecks. Right. So it's like, okay, how do I do it? And usually for us, there's a couple little um, hinges that swing big doors. Right. Mm-hmm. Like for me, if I can increase the conversion on a funnel, I make more money from you know, moving forward. Sure. So every day I come in, I'm like, uh, the funnels are driving traffic to you. Like, what can I do to give myself a raise today? Like, is there a better headline I could use? Is there a different way to structure the pay? You know, like what is those mm-hmm. things, little things like that. The other side of it, which is more related to traffic is, um, is just how many people come in today. So like one of the, the KPIs, the key metrics we look at every single day. In fact, every morning, all the entire ClickHuddle staff with 400 people log on 
do a big Zoom meeting just like this. Wow. And, um, and we all go through our, it's, an, it's a seven minute meeting. Where we go through all of our, our KPIs and it holds everyone cross accountable to each other. But one of them is how many people joined our list yesterday. And um, cause that is like, you know, if you look at the, the metrics and the math, you make money based on how many people on your list. So how many people join our list today? Like we're looking at that number every single day. And it's like, if, if we can make that every day, if that grows, I, you know, click funnels making more money, which means I'm making more money, which means I'm giving myself a raise every day. So I picked those, those key metrics that are like, you know, and like one's our list, one's conversions, one's how many people join click funnels today. Like there's a couple little things like that. And it's just every day coming in as a team looking at that. And it's interesting them. They say that what you measure grows, unless you're in weight loss and what you measure shrinks. But everything else <laughs> what you measure actually grows. So it's like, what are the things that, that if you look at them every single day uh, and if they grow, it'll give yourself a race today or it'll make you healthier or whatever that thing is. Like look at that and then daily track it, daily look at it. Because the more you look at it, the more your brain starts subconsciously trying to figure out ways to, to fix it mm. um, and try to improve it and things like that and just making it um, something you're super aware of. Um, yeah. yeah. And so that's kind of how, how we do it with, with, uh, with our team. How do we give ourselves yeah. a race? No, I like it. Yeah. In the book, I think you're like, okay, well, you know, how do I add more people to dream 100? How do I, uh, bring more affiliates in? How do I get them to promote more, uh, incentivizing them in better ways so that, yeah, it's, uh, traffic. It's just a really cool question. I was like, huh, I like that. I'm going to write that down. And like, it's a perfect thing to just go through the books, but just every single day that I think it just really focuses on where you should be at. Uh, and you know, it's, it's kind of the whole 80, 20 or even going, slimmer down into the options that you got in front of you. That's awesome. So, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I guess one more question and then we'll, we'll let you jump off. Cause I know you got to get, uh, you get to some other stuff. Um, one of the things you talk about towards the end of the book as well is building an affiliate army. And I think, I think right now in this sort of current environment that we're in where everybody's kind of stuck at home and uncertainty, I actually think affiliate marketing is a huge opportunity for people right now. Um, what, what sort of advice do you give people for, um, Let's see, which, which side of the coin do I want to talk about here? I guess for traffic, how, how would we go and get affiliates for our product? What's some like quick advice or tips for, for getting people excited to promote one of your products? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, affiliate traffic is some of the best traffic because like they promote you, they, they risk their money and you only pay them if they make a sale. So it's like, it's great. But I think with affiliates, a couple of things. Number one, like a lot of times your customers, people who already bought your product are like the best affiliates. A lot mm -hmm. of times they don't know how to be an affiliate. So it's like, if you can train them and educate them on how to share this, then they'll become your biggest evangelist ever. Mm -hmm. I know when ClickFunnels first launched, that was our biggest thing. It's like, how do we get our customers, like telling other customers, like they have a good experience. They're, they're know people as well. And so we made a really simple process where it's just like, you know, when you log in, like there's your link, grab it and give it to a friend. And if you get three friends, basically the software's free at this point. And so like people would share it and that it made it really simple for them. So those kind of affiliates are your customers that you're turning into affiliates. Mm -hmm. Then there's the next tier of people who know what affiliate marketing is. And, uh, and those guys need a little, um, they don't need education, but they need like, incentive, right? What's mm -hmm. going to get them to do it, right? So looking for, for cash or bonuses or prize or something, something fun. So you probably look, notice with ClickFunnels, like about once a month, we do some kind of affiliate contest. Like we did a big mm -hmm. affiliate contest when the book launched. We did one, uh, you know, every month Dave's like trying to figure out like, what's something like, let's give away some prizes. Cause it's like, people need a reason. Like they can promote anything. It's like, why would they promote yours? Well, where do they get different? Like why, you know, you try to make things that are fun and make offers mm -hmm. that really well. And just, you know, I mean, you think about ClickFunnels, we've had this for s almost six years now. And it's hard to get people to keep promoting something for six years straight. So right. like, okay, how do we do it? Well, all right, let's write a book that then they can promote that, which then gets people to click funnels. Let's do uh, a webinar that gets, you know, and just giving them different things to promote and different exciting things um, to, to be able to keep promoting so that they can keep having different conversations and, and keep them engaged. So some of the, some of the things we do. Right Love on. It. Uh, I like it, man. Well, let's uh, let's wrap it up. We always, of course, uh, let's tell them about, give them, a, I guess, the, the scoop on how they can get their hands on traffic secrets and maybe even that whole box set too. Yes. So uh, right now we're during the, the pre-launch. It's actually start shipping on May 5th, um, which is coming up soon. So, uh, but you can pre-launch and order them right now. Um, I don't know if you guys have a link or want me to send directly to the, the page, whatever. Uh, you can spit out whatever link you got. We don't have it handy. We should have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you go to trafficseekers.com or click on these guys' link, whatever they have it, but if you go to trafficseekers.com, uh, again, I, I prepaid for the books. You just cover the shipping and handling. And, um, and so it's like under 10 bucks if you're in the U.S. and a little bit more if you're international. Um, so, um, that's kind of how we get. And there's a whole bunch of five or six free videos that are like amazing. Um, some of our, like Prince CA has got 3 billion views on, on Facebook. Of his wow. videos did a whole video, on like how to do create viral videos. It was so simple. You're like, God, the guy's brilliant. We've got <laughs> Dean Graciosi wrote the forward talking about some of his biggest traffic strategy. It's, it's some really cool stuff you get for free as well. And then, uh, for anyone who's like, I want to go into this right now. Um, some of the upsells are the, um, the audio books. You can start listening to this right away. I did spend. <laughs> 
three days in the studio reading this whole book. So you can get the audio book. And then in the upsell path, if you want, um, one of the things that you'll see is like the box set, which is like uh, my my three books, dot-com secrets, expert secrets, and traffic secrets. These are the new updated hardbound versions. So if you read them in the past, uh, these are the new versions. Um, and there's a lot of new stuff. Like for example, the dot-com secrets book initially was 58,000 words, the first printing. Um, for this new one, I uh, I deleted 30,000 words and it ended up at over 90, like 93, 90,000. Oh so it's basically twice as big as it used to be and, and mostly new. And then same thing with X, I rewrote both these books and then traffic. So they all kind of go together now. And this is nice. the workbook that helps you work through them all. So that's in the upsell flow if you guys want the entire box set. Which is kind of <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've, I've read the first two and I didn't realize that these new ones were completely updated and overhauled. So now I get to read them again. So yes, you'll know, love right? it. It's funny because I wrote .com secrets initially. It was based on like my perception of the world because it's just mm -hmm. it was my thoughts. And then we launched ClickFunnels at the same time. So in the last five years, I've been able to see hundreds of thousands of other people and like taking all that back and like making the tweaks to make it more, even more, I think, and hopefully better. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully better. <laughs> and the workbook too. I think that's cool because you could bounce around and then actually yeah. follow along and kind of write your whole process there too. So yeah. that was Love unique. It. Had no clue that was even attached to it until we got it. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Awesome. Russell. Russell. Well, thanks so much no. for uh, hanging out with us and spending the time. Really appreciate it. Oh, and, uh, a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me and thanks for making yeah. a fun interview. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, Everybody go pick right. up Traffic Secrets. It's amazing. <laughs> See you, man. Take care. Guys. All right. That was a good one. Yeah, that was good. It was short and that sweet, was, but to the point. Yeah, it was. But you know, you and I, we we weren't lying when we when you were saying that we read the book. I think uh -huh. I think you read a little more um, word for word, where I did a, a real quick skim over the book last night, but got the the sort of high level points of the book. It's a lot um, to read, <laughs> like <laughs> like Russell said too. <laughs> it, it's a big book, but there is so much in there. Um, you know, I think the the thing that I I really really enjoyed about the book was the sort of um, the sort of schedules at the end of the book, mm -hmm. right? Like, at, or at the end of each chapter. So for example, there's a chapter on, on Facebook ads at the end. It's like, here's what you should do on a daily basis. Here's what you should do on a weekly basis. Here's what you should do on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Right. And he does, he has a lot of like uh, diagrams. It's kind of funny. He's got this real like silly style with like stick figure drawings and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's really like, the book is really good at drawing out visual elements to explain the concepts. He's oh yeah. All the books have done that. So like they have this whole like trilogy set that you know, we're fortunate to get a kind of a pre box set that had all yeah. of these and they're, they're hardcover too. That's yep. the sound of hardcover. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like he's taking a face with it. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't, yeah. <laughs> don't. But like these things, literally, they're like manuals for, well, this one's traffic. But um, I would say in addition to this, like not only just traffic, it's like, it's kind of like how we use our Dream 100. It's like opening doors for just new things for your business too, which really at the end of the day, traffic are people. If you think about it, duh, it's not just running ads. It's like the other side of that, there are people, there are relationships and things that you can cultivate and doors you can open for opportunities. And um, traffic, um, Russell talked about some of those like um, with Marcus Lemonis from The Profit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like Traffic Secrets is, uh, and I know we've talked a lot about it. We don't usually do like a full episode of like, here's a book, 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 book kind of thing. But literally it's a manual that Matt and I were talking about. It's like there's schedules that will swipe in here. And we'll, mm -hmm. we will use this for like uh, doubling down on Facebook, for instance. For us right now, that is extremely, it's working very well. Even Russell talked about groups. I brought it up how mm -hmm. our uh, Hustle and Flow chart community is, and the Facebook group is, basically on par, maybe even will overtake our email list in terms of engagement and all that. And mm -hmm. it's honestly like more fun. You know, it's, it's yeah. really cool because we could talk to a lot of your, you know, you guys listening and you know, yeah. it's at flowchartgroup.com if you ever wanted to join for free. <laughs> for free. Yeah. No, I, no. I, I mean, th this was a great conversation. I love the, 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 the conceptual ideas around traffic. I feel like on our podcast, we've done a lot of tactical episodes, right? Like if you want to learn about Facebook ads and really dive deep on Facebook ads, go check out, you know, the David Schloss episodes, the Kurt mm -hmm. Molly episodes, the Nicholas Kuzmich episode. We have so many tactical episodes on Facebook ads, Google ads. You know, we've got John Belcher. We had Justin Brooke talk about Google ads. We've had so many different, you know, just ninjas with Google talk about Google strategies. All of those strategies have been on the podcast before all the tactical stuff and all the tactical stuff is in this book, but 
I think the thing that not enough people talk about is the why, the why behind the traffic strategies. Mm -hmm. Like, why should I be doing using Google in this way? Why do I need to know the history of Google and why Google was initially developed? Why do I need to know the history of Facebook and why Facebook was initially developed? It's because over the years, people are trying, like Russell said it, he put it great. Over the years, people have tried to sort of hack these methods, right? People have tried to figure out what's the easiest way to get as much Facebook traffic as possible for as cheap as possible. Are there loopholes that I can find? Things like that. But at the end of the day, you get a lot better results if you sort of lean into what Facebook wants you to use Facebook for, what Google wants you to use Google for, right? So mm-hmm. I think um, I think sort of that high level knowledge behind the various traffic strategies is just as valuable, if not more valuable than any individual tactic that you can learn. Yep. Yep. So it's all those paradigm shifts. And I think there's a lot of them for everybody in here, no matter what skill level you got uh, with traffic right now in business. So um, get the book. It's uh, it's, you know, it's basically just you paying for shipping and it's tiny shipping. I think it's 10 bucks or so uh, for US and, and a little bit more for international. Not sure the exact prices, but just go to hustleandflowchart.com slash traffic and you will get it. So um, that's about it, man. I think that's all I got. I think that's a wrap. Thanks again to Russell Brunson for joining us today. Uh, hustleandflowchart.com slash traffic is the book. Hustleandflowchart.com slash comp is where you can get the notes on this episode. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. Before taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Mm-mm-mm.